Welcome to Eyes on Enterprise, where I'm bringing on Googlers to talk about the technology landscapes that are helping enterprises scale, adapt, and modernize. My name is Stephanie Wong, and today I have Sona Oakley, Solution Architect here at Google Cloud. Very important topic that we're covering today. We're talking about migration to the cloud and diving into strategies and the tools to help you get there. There's a lot that we're going to cover today, so I want to thank you so yeah. much for being on the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to come on the show and talk about migrations. Great. So huge topic. First off, migration is something that people often consider for a long period of time because they have rightful concerns over moving their workloads to the cloud. And then on top of that, small companies versus large companies have different needs and migration paths. So how do you start to dissect that process? Yes, absolutely. I would say that the first thing that you want to start with, because migrations is such a heady topic, is you want to start with the why. Ask yourself the question, why are we going down this path? What is going to be the business goal that I'm accomplishing, or even the technical goal that I'm accomplishing? And once you kind of frame that and keep that in mind, it really makes it clear how we can get from where your company is today to where it is that you want to be. And whether that's being able to develop faster, whether that's being able to take advantage of all of the efficiencies and scale that moving to the cloud can bring, it'll really vary based on your business and your business and how big your business is, what your business goals are. So there are a lot of ways to move to the cloud and along with it, many considerations when you're picking a strategy. You know, some companies want to decommission some workloads, they want to consolidate, others want to move their VMs to the clouds and others want to modernize by transforming into containers. So how do you start in that decision-making process? Essentially, the way that you'd want to think about it is that once we have that North Star that we want to accomplish, we want to go back to square one and really start to build a catalog of all of the applications that you have, the workloads that you're thinking about moving, what your networking and security requirements are. And once we've categorized and built out that list, we can start to think about what our migration strategy is moving forward. Now, when I say that, a lot of people think in their minds that they need a very complicated system diagram where there's all these connections taking place, you know, where we have the exact schematics of the way that our applications work. For larger enterprises and businesses that have grown organically, sometimes that's not feasible. So I would say that, you know, coming to the table with anything, even if it's just a napkin, which has happened to me, a customer showed up with a napkin of just all their applications and workloads written down that they wrote down on the flight to to come up to Mountain View. So I would say that even something that simple gives us a good starting point and gives us an idea of at least what is top of mind for you. And then we can go through and dig through with the other various groups and business lines of business that you have to figure out um, you know, what are other applications, what are other resources that are being used. Right. So going back to the first part of the workflow, collecting inventory, it can include a lot of things like dependencies on your app stack, including your database and message brokers, and then you have your infrastructure underlying it, firewall rules, security policies, Am I missing anything there? I mean, that really covers the meat of it. And then things like source code repositories, oftentimes the, the gotchas happen when a business grows organically and we see you know, people coming out of the woodwork as this migration process is happening. Hey, actually I'm keeping my source code over here, not in the official repository, or right. I've got this machine that I'm using 2% of CPU on um, for, my, you know, for my own workloads, things like that. Comprehensive evaluation ahead of time is gonna save you in the long run. Yes. So I know that there are a lot of cases where moving to the cloud may not be practical or it's just not technically feasible in the near term. So, you know, like, for example, you have licenses that you can't move to the cloud or it, your tech stack may not be virtualizable in some cases or you have third party frameworks and, and languages being used. So what do you do in those cases? Yeah, I would say that in those cases, it's okay to say no, and sometimes no is the right answer. For example, you know, their mainframes are not going away. We've predicted that they will be for the past 40 years, and they're they're here to stay. So, you know, if you have legacy applications that are running in those kinds of environments, it's totally fine to leave them where they are, and then to focus on what we can accomplish. Because the last thing we want to do is kind of get into a situation where we're trying to force a square peg into a round hole. And we can also do something that's a close approximation to moving to cloud. 
cloud. So for example, I was working with a company that was getting close to a data center shutdown. And so instead of having them move over completely to the cloud, what we did was we moved them to a co-location facility. And what that allowed them to do was it allowed them to still reap some of the benefits because they're still located close to a cloud entry point um, and are able to get that high throughput, low latency that they were looking for without doing the official cloud migration. So just jumping off what you just said, there are a lot of ways to approach this and you have to meet customers where they are. And you know, some may want to do an all-in-one lift and shift while mm -hmm. others prefer to do hybrid approach, uh, private and, and public cloud. So, how do you advise your customers in that? Absolutely. I would say that it, again, comes back to what the customer wants. You know, if most of your business is on legacy applications and hardware, we'll have to consider a very different migration path than if you're already cloud native and looking to scale. So for example, we actually worked with a customer who had very aggressive timelines to shut down their data center. Again, this is a very familiar story. Um, and what we did was we advised them to kind of lift and shift their current applications as is and then modernize later because they were facing a really um, imminent time crunch that we wanted to make sure that we could adhere to, and then we can always modernize those applications and advise on a containerization strategy at a later point in time. Don't feel like you have to you know, do everything right. at the same time. On the topic of containerization, people often ask, OK, how do I know if my application is a good candidate for containerizing and you know, pushing up to the cloud? Things like dev test applications, multi-tier stacks, mm -hmm. LAMP applications, or perhaps you have a Java app running on-premise, web apps. How do you know? Google can absolutely help you in that effort, you know, especially once we've done that categorization of applications. But generally, the ones that you mentioned are good for containerization. I would also include in there things like training labs, um, you know, thinking also about your application. If it's resilient to restarts, then that is a good one as well to be moving over. Um, and, you know, again, it just goes back to making sure that you're not trying to force a containerization strategy. I was working with a large scale manufacturing company who really wanted to go all in on containers, but do to their kind of technical requirements, it wasn't the right fit for them. So instead, we moved them onto system containers, which still gives them a little bit of that flexibility, but isn't that full container uh, portfolio that we were originally thinking about. So this still begs the question, what do you do with monolithic applications? Because I mean, a lot of enterprises are still running off that. How do you migrate to a microservice environment? The way that I think about that is, you know, if you're thinking about scaling a building or scaling a mountain, you don't try to jump all the way up to the top at one time. You know, you take it step by step and really go incrementally. As your team learns more about Google Cloud and Kubernetes and containerization, we can break down that application and move toward more of a microservices strategy. One of the things that Google has done that's a little bit of a nice middle ground there is using application containers. So instead of thinking about containerization in the normal context, an application container allows you to put the application, entire application, into a container. And so that way you can still take advantage of the higher fault tolerance and portability that containerization provides without necessarily moving or breaking down that right. monolithic application all at right. once. Right, because I think that what's intimidating is a full re architecture yes. of these applications. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I love this idea of middle ground and moving in parts because it lowers the risk and the barrier to entry to cloud migration. And you can still take advantage of like the uh, software-defined networking, live migration, fast reboots. But I, I do want to talk about specifics a little bit about the tools that exist to help you migrate. Like, for example, moving compute workloads to the cloud. Do we have anything there? Absolutely. So we have migrate for Compute Engine. And essentially, what that allows you to do, whether you're moving one workload or thousands, um, it provides you a unified way to move all of these component trees over to Google Cloud, uh, Google Compute Engine, which is GCE. Um, it also provides cloud testing and validation. We have a plugin that makes it really simple to kind of find those, um, to find those workloads and move them over. Um, and then lastly, which I think is the most critical part, and you touched on this at the beginning, is that we have a stateful rollback. So if for at any point you feel like you need to hit the ejector button and really just get out of the migration, um, we have that capability where you can roll back to your on-premise environment. We can pause, you know, take a time out and see what's happening. In yeah. that situation. And that's very important because once again, you want to make sure you have compatibility towards the cloud first and you're yes. not creating disruption for your user base. 
So being able to roll it back is a key, I think. Yes, absolutely. One of the customer examples um, that I always like to use is that we had a Fortune 500 company who was using SAP actually implement a, they were originally considering a multi-cloud strategy and then they moved over to GCP. And what we helped them do was we helped them run SAP on Google Cloud Platform, which was really important because they were part of the pharma business and that was important for their pharma and healthcare verticals. We, um, all in all, I believe covered something like 7,000 systems across 30 different applications um, with 12 terabytes of data moving on to GCP. And all of that was done with Migrate for Compute Engine. Wow, great. Another great example of a very common use case is VMware migration to the cloud. Do we have a tool that exists for that as well? If you've decided that retaining use of a VMware-based control plane is what's appropriate for your business, uh, we can actually support that. And we have support for VMware vSphere workloads that we can move over onto Google Cloud Platform. Awesome. So what about the applications that do need to stay on premise, yet they want to take advantage of the cloud native capabilities? What do we recommend in those cases? Earlier in 2019, Google Cloud came out with a new product called Anthos. And essentially, that platform does exactly what you asked. We have seen that customers are running their applications on premise um, in Google Cloud, as well as other cloud providers. And the management of that becomes very ornery. Now you're looking at separate config management, separate monitoring platforms, separate logging platforms. And Anthos seeks to use unify all of that, um, we pull all of the underlying hardware together and allow you to manage your on-premise and your hybrid cloud, multi-cloud environments in one place. If we dive a little bit deeper, the way that we do it on-premise is that we have a tool called GKE on-premise, which allows you to implement a containerization strategy in your on-premise environments. Do you have an example of a customer that is leveraging Anthos and using on-premise and cloud together? Yes, actually we have a very big banking customer who's using Cisco Hyperflex as as well as Anthos today um, to really do exactly that. They've found that it's been able to simplify their monitoring, logging, and config management, and they're still able to get access to all the benefits of cloud. And, um, and it's as if they were deployed cloud native, but their underlying hardware is still on premise. And that just reminded me another exciting announcement was Migrate for Anthos which I know actually lets customers move their VM-based workloads to the cloud and convert them into containers, which is amazing because you can support edge deployments, you can actually migrate from Compute Engine, on-premise, other clouds. So I think this is going to be very exciting for the future as well. Absolutely, and that's actually why we're seeing a lot of financial institutions have interest in Anthos is because they're running these data-driven applications, which really hits that sweet spot for containerization. Um, because you know, instead of having a monolithic application, you can really break it down into its appropriate components, and anything that you need to put a web or mobile front end on top of really lends itself to that use case very well. So for those that are wondering, how can I get started in that decision-making process? What is there to recommend? Oh my gosh, there's a number of resources. Um, I would say that my favorite is probably, we have a set of reference guides available on cloud.google.com, which I think will be linked below, um, that, get, that are a great getting started guide and help you to think through what it actually means to migrate um, your business. Also, we have a variety of professional services resources, and internally that organization is called PSO. And so we can absolutely leverage workshops that they have to, um, to help you out as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. We went over a ton of information, so thanks again. <laughs> absolutely. This was a lot of fun. So thank you so much for having me. Everyone, I encourage you all to check out the resources below and check out our other series, Stack Chat, where we go into actual examples and bring on customers to talk about how they're implementing our technology and migration patterns. Let us know what you think of migration. Are you doing lift and shift, multi-cloud? What tools are you using? Comment below and join us next time for Eyes on Enterprise. Mm -hmm.